welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Shannon Monique, and I am here to serve you the word. So come feast with me, where you will never thirst again and have the eternal bread of life. Shalom and welcome to Feasting on the Word with Shannon Monique. I'm coming to you guys with this video because the Lord dropped this message in my spirit and actually he dropped it in my spirit while I was working on another message that he has for me to release to you. But when he began dealing with me with this particular message, he let me know that this must come out first. And so um, I stopped everything that I was doing as it pertains to the other message and really began to focus on this. And guys, listen, all I can say to you is the Lord is really trying to get through to you. It definitely coincides with the last message that I posted. If you had a chance to listen to it, you will see the connection in it. If you haven't, I would suggest after you listen to this message, you can always go back and listen to the video. Before I go any further, let me just um, stop and go into a quick prayer. Father God, I thank you for being Alpha and Omega. Lord, everything begins and ends with you. And we thank you because you take the time out to guide us and direct us. And you do it because you love us. You want us to walk on the straight and narrow. You're getting our attention because you have our best interests at heart. And so, Father, I ask that you allow this word to penetrate the hearts of your children. I ask that you allow this word to sink in, allow them to meditate on each and every word that you are speaking through me, Father. May they hear you and none of me. May they leave this video um, just feeling renewed. Lord God, may they uh, have a more deeper understanding of what you are speaking to their hearts, Father. May they cling to you and not run from you. And Father, I thank you that this word is covered under your precious blood, under the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you and we praise you. Amen. All right. So <clears throat> basically, um, the Lord, so one of the ways that the Lord speaks to me is through numbers. I've been seeing numbers since 2011. And for the most part, I am knowledgeable when it comes to numbers. Uh, really, basically, I'm not going to say any number, but I have a good understanding of most numbers. However, there is one number I will always run from, and that was the number six. And I guess for me, I always saw it even before the Lord um, <clears throat> began speaking to me through numbers back in 2011. Even before then, I always associated the number, you know, 666 as a number that was bad it's an evil number that's how i always looked at it and so when the lord started dealing with me <clears throat> with numbers and i would see you know 666 or 66 i would run from it and i would you know i would ask the lord like lord what are you trying to tell me like what are you but there was still a fear there that my guard still wasn't let down and he allowed my knowledge to grow and i be you know, I got to the point where I understood that six means flesh. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's something bad per se. It means just that flesh. Number six represents flesh. It represents man. OK, so I got to a point where I had that understanding and it was like, OK, but the Lord was still, you know, he was delicate. He was careful with me in the way that he handled me with giving me certain messages because he didn't want to scare me away. But as we all know, when you begin to develop and grow in the Lord, it, your gifting will grow. It will develop. You can't run for long. Right. He's only going to let you run but for so long. So he began showing me 66 like crazy guys like he 
it seemed like everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, I keep seeing 66. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me? What are you, what message are you trying to relate to me? And so long story short, I actually was just going through the word and getting, you know, all the information I needed for the message that the Lord wants me to, um, to, to um, give to you guys. And as I was doing that, the Bible flipped open to Isaiah 66. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go again. And then I saw the number 66 again. And I said, okay, Father, I get it. You want me to stop and you want me to read this. Got it. Guys, I cannot stress this enough to you early in the morning. So I apologize if my voice is just not reflecting the right way sometimes it's hard for me to find that quiet space for you because i do have children i had to get this word out asap because the lord is listen we serve a great god we serve a merciful god we serve a god that extends his grace daily but understand something that same God does not play. He doesn't play, okay? And when he says something, he means it. And we are living in a time where the Lord is, you, you, you have to pick and choose your battles. You have to pick and choose your battles. With that being said, I am reading from Isaiah 66. It's actually the New International Version. And I'm going to start from verse 1. It says, this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they come into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I will look on with faith favor those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word but whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck whoever makes a grain offering is like one who represents pig's blood and whoever burns memorial incense is like one who worships an idol they have chosen their own ways and they delight in their abominations so i also will choose harsh treatment for them and will bring on them what they dread for when i called no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Let me just stop there for a moment. Guys, he literally dropped this in my spirit after I put that video out. Like he gave me this, um, he gave me this chapter yesterday he gave it to me on yesterday and when I read that part I said Lord you just and he spoke to my spirit and said yes and I'm letting them know I'm letting them know it's he's calling and one of the things I said in that last video was God forbid he calls and you don't answer. Because you got to understand, we serve a merciful God. We do. But he's also not a God to be played with. We are to reverence him. You can't keep diddling and dabbling and then running back to the Lord or keep putting him off when he's calling you. As I said in the last video, there will be times that, you know, he's giving you that grace. He's allowing you to, you know, when you come around, he's allowing you to come around. But when he calls you, 
Think about it. Growing up, you know, you in you're, you're in a household. Your parents call you. You answer them. Not to answer a call from the Lord is disrespect. And He's grace. He's 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 full of grace and He's merciful. But the Lord does not want to be rejected over and over and over. So verse five picks up picks up and says. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word, your own people who hate you and exclude you because of my name have said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. Yet they will be put to shame. Hear that uproar from the city. Hear that noise from the temple. It is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemies all they deserve. Listen, guys, this is a time of judgment and hope. It's a time of judgment and hope. Like, he, but he's letting you know, this is a time of judgment. Please do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. He is releasing blessings. You're hearing a lot of videos on blessings and marriages. And, and that's awesome. It's wonderful. And that's great for those who have <clears throat> held on to the promises of God and have done the things that that they were you know have done the things that they were supposed to do but please do not be deceived this is also a time of judgment and it's going out both ways verse 7 before she goes into labor she gives birth before the pains come upon her she delivers a son who has ever heard of such things who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? So listen, the Lord does things in order and you have to understand you may not. You may not understand everything. You may not understand the mind of God, right? You may not understand everything that he's doing, but understand something. He does things in order. OK, just keep that in mind. Our God is a God of order, okay? Yet, no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery, says your God? So, not only is he a God of order, but he's also a God that when he says something, or when he does something, he's going to complete it. He's going to finish it. If he said it, he'll do it. If he started it, he'll finish it. Because that's the God that we serve. Verse 10 says, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. Okay, so the Lord is giving us instructions here. He's telling us to rejoice with Jerusalem, not go against Jerusalem, not fight with Jerusalem, not laugh at Jerusalem, but be glad for her. Rejoice greatly with her. For if you do that, you will be satisfied. Verse 12 says, for this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees as a mother comforts her child. So will I comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice and you will flourish like grass. The hands of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. Let me read that again. Let me read that again. 
the hands of the Lord will be made known to his servants. But his fury will be shown to his foes. Guys, this is a promise. The Lord has promised us this. It's a promise. Verse 15 says, see, the Lord is coming with fire and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people. And many will be those slain by the Lord. You guys can go. I would urge you to go and like really meditate on the full chapter. But let me just say this to you. I am new to YouTube. But I am not new to the word of God. I am not new to this walk. When your father speaks, I suggest you listen. I am the messenger. That is it. This is his word. It is there. You can read it for yourself. Anyone who have been seeing, if you've been seeing 66, or if this message is, uh, if you feel this message in your spirit, I suggest you make sure that you are doing what the Lord said do. Because I would not want to be on the side of the Lord's fury and his anger. I just, I wouldn't suggest it. I think it's, I think it's plain. I think it's clear. You know, um, it's there. It's, it's, it's the word. It's the word of God. He put it there. And his promises are true yesterday, today, and forever. God is not a God that he will be mocked. He is not a God that will lie. He tells us what we need to do. At such a time as this, we need to take heed to every word the Lord speaks. It's not a game, guys. It's not a game. And you have to understand when the Lord speaks, he has spoken. And you are to listen. When he calls you, you answer your father. Do not ignore him. Don't do it. I will hate to be on the other side of that. See, let me tell you something. The Lord, no, I don't mess with him. And the father let me know, you know what, Shannon? Yeah, I have my prophets out releasing words of blessings and of love and of peace and of joy. And, you know, the many gifts that I have stored up for my children, I do. But at the same time, I need my prophets to come out and, and also tell it like it is and he have he have you know who he has said who he's gonna have you know to give certain words to and listen i'm not gonna always be the one that are that is coming forth to give um you know a word that someone may not want to hear he's gonna have me give a variation you know of words like i'm it's gonna be different words that i'm gonna be releasing for the lord but when the Lord is at a place where he is no longer um, willing to wait for you, willing to be put off for you, you have to learn that you got to listen. You can't toy with him. You can't. There are consequences that come behind that. And I mean, even as I'm speaking to you guys, I feel like I'm kind of like tripping over my words because let me tell you something. I am a person of peace. Like I'm a very peaceful person and it's how the Lord deals with me. But when I can feel that he is not pleased, it's like, let me tell you, I be trembling in my boots. I don't mess with him. Everybody that know me know I don't mess with the Lord. I don't play with him. Mm -mm. He's a creator. 
He created all of this. You think I'm going to mess with him? And you want to try to stand up against him? Or you've gotten comfortable because he's allowed, he has allowed you to kind of drag your feet? Well, listen, he's not allowing you to drag your feet anymore. This is it. He's telling you what's going to happen. If you are a true servant of his, you will be cared for. But if you're not, his fury will rise up upon you. That's a promise. It's a promise, guys. Again, I'm the messenger. And if the Lord tells me to release a word, I'm releasing it, period. Once I've released it, it's out there. It's out there. I've done my part. I've done what I was supposed to do. Now, it's, it's the ball is in your court. It's in your hands now. What are you going to do with it? You're going to continue to ignore it. You deal with the consequences. If you take heed and you follow his instructions and do what he asks you to do, you will be cared for. That's it. It's nothing more to it. That's it. It's either one or the other. Straddling both sides of the fence. Them days, <laughs> them days are over. Again, you're not perfect. He knows you're not perfect. He understands a heart that's willing. But what he will not understand is a heart that's just disobedient. That's just, you know, turning your face away from the Lord. You know, you just, you, you're not trying you're being disobedient. You're ignoring him. The Lord is not going to continue to put up with that without you facing consequences. And that's just this message in a nutshell. That's it. Um, I'm going to continue working on the other message that the Lord has for me to release. When the time is appropriate, I will release it. I'm not going to release a word until the, until the Lord tells me.